You are listening to Smart Women's Dating Podcast, episode number 42. Welcome to Smart Women's Dating Podcast. I am your host, certified life coach Lærke Nielsen, and I help smart, independent women attract the love they deeply desire without having to chase or settle. This podcast will give you the mindset tools and insights you need to finally crack the code to your love life. Are you ready? Then let's go. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast. What do you do when you sense that a man that you're dating is pulling you away, texting you less regularly and reaching out less than earlier? And how can you get rid of the anxiety you start to feel when you think about whether this is a sign that he isn't that much into you after all? This is a scenario that pops up again and again. And if you listen to all my episodes, you will know that I talked about the combination of an unavailable man and a commitment-ready woman, and what to do in that situation. But today, I want to address this scenario from two different perspectives. The perspective of attachment styles and the perspective of feminine masculine energy. Because I was inspired to do this episode after a conversation I had with a friend who talked about it from attachment style perspective. And I think it can be useful to take that approach as well And I know a lot of you are interested in and familiar with the concept of attachment styles. So I will tell you what I think is not a good solution or way to respond. And I will tell you what I do advise instead from these two perspectives. So let's start by looking at the scenario. You met this guy. You really like him. He seems to be different than the other guys from your past. And he also seems to be into you, but it's still too early to say where things are going. Then you notice after some weeks that he texts you less frequently and he takes longer time to answer you back. So this is what happened to my friend and she told me how this made her feel insecure. And because she has knowledge about her attachment style, she knew that she was anxiously attached and she understood why she was feeling insecure and how it all related back to early attachment patterns and also previous relationships. So her thinking was that the best solution would be for her to acknowledge that she needed more attention from him to feel secure and then express this need to him. So where she would earlier not have said anything, she now would be ready to tell him that texting more infrequently than normally made her feel insecure and she would like some reassurance from him. Now, I actually disagreed with her. I did not think the approach to tell him that she needed him to text her more regularly was a good idea. And I will of course explain to you why. So if we look at it from the perspective of attachment styles. Now, I'm not going to go into much detail about attachment styles and what it is, but I'll give you a brief introduction in case you've never heard about it. The concept of attachment style is based on the theory that the attachment we have with early caretakers, usually our parents, will shape the kind of attachment we create in adult life with partners. And this will sometimes lead us to attract partners that are unhealthy for us, but where the connection feels familiar. There are four different attachment styles, and the first one is secure attachment. If you feel safe in letting people close, If you feel comfortable in expressing what you want and desire, and you know that all intimate relationships come with a risk of abandonment or rejection, but you are not paralyzed or limited by fear of rejection, you might be securely attached. Securely attached also don't fear feeling trapped or losing their freedom or autonomy in a relationship. They know they can set healthy boundaries to protect that in themselves. So this is the secure attachment style and this is the healthy attachment style, the one that we want to work towards if we are not there already. And then there are three other styles and they're all insecure. First of all, there is anxious attachment. And that is when you fear abandonment so much that your whole system is wired to be an alert and constantly look out for the small signs that a partner could be losing interest or they could be on their way to leave you. This can also lead to fear of intimacy because intimacy makes you vulnerable to abandonment and rejection. 
And in a relationship, you tend to need a lot of validation from your partner if you are anxiously attached. You worry so much if they're going to leave you that you don't believe you can have boundaries and you are willing to compromise yourself if you think this will increase chances of making them stay. You are typically more preoccupied with what your partner thinks and feels than what you think and feel. You are more focused on other people's needs than your own. And maybe you struggle to even know yourself and what you need. This pattern is grounded in early childhood where basically your needs were only occasionally met and this created anxiety and uncertainty for when you are going to have your needs met and it made you try really hard to get the attention and care that you needed as a child. Then there's the dismissive avoidant and the fearful avoidant attachment style and as the last one is extremely rare, we're just going to focus on the dismissive avoidant attachment. This is if you are not comfortable letting people too close to you because you fear losing your freedom and your autonomy while being trapped in the relationship. Having someone depend on you or need you feels overwhelming. You don't like the idea of having to be there for someone emotionally. And at the same time, you don't really trust that your partner could do the same for you. You need space to reconnect with yourself and stay grounded and you're very independent, and deep down you struggle with trusting other people and showing vulnerability. This pattern is grounded in a childhood where your needs were rarely met, so this is as opposed to occasionally met with the anxious style. The avoidant tried again and again to get the attention and care from the caretakers, but as this rarely happened, they gave up trying, and they stopped relying on others and learned that it's better not to expect your needs to be met. So this was like a really, really short explanation and there's a lot more to be said about attachment styles and I might do that in another episode. But the main reason I bring it up here is to show you the typical sort of match made in hell or in heaven if you manage to extract the learnings. The anxiously attached woman with a dismissive avoidant man. And just a brief comment, if you're now wondering if you're one or the other, you could have a bit of several attachment styles in you but there's typically one that is dominant. And it's also important to know that different partners can activate different attachment styles in us. And even a secure person can start leaning towards anxious if they are with an avoidant person. Often, if you're finding yourself repeatedly attracting and ending up in relationships or rather situationships with avoidant men, men who don't offer you the attention you want, there's a good chance that you are anxiously attached. And there's also a good chance that your early caretakers showed you the same kind of behavior as the avoidant partner. They didn't offer you enough attention and they didn't meet your needs in very early childhood. So your system is wired to accept crumbs and feel undernourished emotionally. Your subconscious self believes that your emotions don't matter. So when you meet someone who treats you like this, you react to it as if it was normal. Not like something is wrong. So you don't naturally step away when you notice that a man is not offering you the attention you want. And here's the tricky part. Your subconscious self might be seeking to recreate that same situation as you had in early childhood. Look for a partner who offers the same kind of unavailability as you experienced in childhood because this provides a possibility to correct the wrongs. Like if you manage to win him over, to finally get the validation and attention you want, the struggle ends, the childhood wound is healed, and you have finally proven that you are worthy of love. And this is what keeps you hooked. This is why you don't just leave him. Now, if you had a secure attachment start, you would have just noticed that the guy is flaking. He seems to be zoning out of the connection, and you would have found that very unattractive and just decided to move on. You might still feel sad about it, but you won't obsess about getting him back. Now, an important thing to say about attachment style is that this is not an identity. It's not a fixed part of your personality that you have to live with. And it's also not something you can demand a partner to adapt to. Instead, what you want to do is work on becoming more secure, shifting more into a secure attachment style. So, if we come back to the scenario of the infrequent texting, what happens is that first anxiety creeps in. 
because you are taking this as a sign you are making it mean that he could be losing interest. You might not even ask yourself, would I be losing interest if he doesn't offer me the attention I want? If you are anxiously attached, a big part of your focus is on trying to figure out what he wants. But this is not just about the man in question. This is about your deep fear of feeling rejected and abandoned as a human being. And the story your subconscious mind keeps telling you is that you are someone who will be abandoned because you are not worthy of love. So your anxiety when you notice he's not texting as frequently as he did, maybe two or three weeks ago, it might be running much, much deeper than you think. And in reality, it's about your worthiness as a human being on this earth. So there is a lot at stake here, as you can see. And one of the things that's really important for anxiously attached in order to become more securely attached is to learn how to identify what you need. So it makes sense from a logical perspective to think that you should ask the guy to text you more frequently in order for you to feel more secure. But as I said earlier, I did not agree with this approach and now finally I'm getting to the explanation. So it's really good to identify that you are not happy with a guy's lack of consistency. That is an important realization. But you don't want to delegate your feeling of security to another person, especially not this early on. If you tell yourself that you can only feel secure if he texts you more often, you give away your power. You make someone else responsible for your emotions. The solution is not to ask him to make you feel secure, it's to learn how to create that feeling of security within yourself. And one of the ways you do that is to promise yourself that you will not abandon you. Meaning that if it turns out that this man is not available to the extent you want a man to be, that his regular texting is indeed a symptom that he's not willing to or capable of offering you the commitment you are looking for, then you won't compromise yourself and ignore your feelings in order to stay with him. You won't forget about the kind of relationship that you wanted to have and you won't give up on yourself. And as you know, you cannot change another person and you definitely can't fix him if he's acting from an avoidant attachment style and not aware of it himself. His lack of regular texting is an observation that you want to make and then instead of telling him to text you more often so that you can feel secure, you can choose to give him a lot of appreciation when he texts you to show him that this is something that's really important to you. This typically will work better and feel more motivating for a partner, not only in early dating, but also inside a relationship. Again, you are very right to identify what you want and that you are not getting what you want, but it's never a good strategy to try to make another person do differently or try to change who they are in order for you to feel a certain way. And even if he did change his texting habits, you might still be in doubt of his intentions because now you might be telling yourself that he's only doing this because you told him to. And also, you feeling this anxiety because of lack of regular texting could in reality be linked to an abandonment wound from childhood and that is not going to be fixed or healed by receiving more text from a man. And it's not his job to heal that either. So then, what do you do? I would advise to just notice that he might be texting less regularly. Maybe it means something, maybe not. The important thing here is what you want and if this matches the way he's showing up on a longer term. You are not going to ask him to text you more and he's not obliged to make you feel secure. So basically, do nothing but observe. And then when he texts you, let him know that you really appreciate hearing from him. And while you do nothing, so to speak, I want you to focus on the rest of your life and do the things that confirm to you that you can feel secure in yourself. And that could be connecting with yourself, your passions, your hobbies, and it could be connecting with friends and family, people that you know are there to stay. And if you don't want to waste your time in the dating context, then open up to other men as well. So this would be my advice coming from the attachment style perspective. But what if we think of the same situation and apply feminine and masculine energy principles? Well, luckily, my advice would be the same. Lean back, let him take lead, show him appreciation when he takes initiative, and if he does nothing, then 
he most likely isn't the right one for you. Because him texting you less regularly is a lack of consistency, and it's a lack of him showing you interest. And as you are looking for someone who does the opposite, who shows up consistently over a longer time, he gets to vote himself off the island, so to speak. He deselects himself and withdraws himself as a candidate to become your future partner. If you here told him to text you more, you would be coming from a wounded feminine energy, feeling powerless over your emotions and trying to control him into doing what you want. And it's a very attached energy coming from this idea, I can only feel secure if you text me more. And also, you reaching out again and again to prompt him to write you back would be a bit of a chasing energy. You also don't want to reach out and ask him, are you still interested? You most likely will not get an honest answer if he's not interested, so let him show you through actions where he stands. And if you want to move on and you haven't heard from him for a while, you can let him know, but then it's more for information, not a question. So lean back and show appreciation when he takes initiative and let go of attachment to a specific outcome with a specific person. And in this situation, I also would advise that you date other men because this will make it easier for you not to reach out and push for answers if one of them is no longer texting you with the same frequency. So here at the end, I just want to say that this advice is of course based on the fact that you are in early dating, not in a relationship. If you were in a relationship and you noticed that the man is shifting and not offering you the same attention as he used to, my advice would be slightly different. But it will still be with the starting point that we cannot change another person. We cannot make them do things for us to feel okay. We can only inspire them to do so and we can show them how much it means to us when they do it. And if in a long-term relationship you want to first give him space and then when he comes back, show him appreciation and get reconnected and then you want to have a talk about how you experienced what happened. So this is what I wanted to say today and I hope it was useful and gave you a new perspective on this scenario. And as usual, you can book a consult call on the link in the show notes or on my website lærkethelovecoach.com if you're curious about what it would be like to work with me, book the call and let's talk. Thank you for listening and have a wonderful week and enjoy dating. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast and you want to get support from a coach on your love journey, I invite you to book a free console call with me. You will find the link in the show notes. And also, don't forget to subscribe and I would love it if you would rate and review this podcast and then you'll also help other women find it. 